Trashomaniacs. Welcome to episode 307 of the Geo Gearheads. This is Daryl W4, and I've got a special guest in studio. It's a fish out of water. Hello! Now, many of you might be noticing that uh, Chris is not here today. I think what he's doing is running around and collecting all of his trackables, and he's going to start doing the uh, collection thing, so they're going to be discovery only. So he's he's running all around the world trying to collect all those trackables before... You know, they get stolen. Sorry. <laughs> As I knock the microphone. It's very weird having two people in the studio. We've done it before, but it's rare. And I'm a novice. Well, that doesn't <laughs> help, but, you know, I, I'm still having some issues. And and Chris, who's, you know, the guy that I can cut away to while I fix stuff over here, isn't here. So it always makes things a little bit tricky. All right, so we did get some feedback from the last show. So, uh, Paula, you want to read that one? Okay, the Wooden Radio emailed in stating, the batteries I use most of the time in my 64S are Duracell, 25 milliamp rechargeable. These are green with a gold top and available at the local Ace hardware store. They seem to last a whole day on caching, not dying at as rapid rate as others. Nothing scientific, just my feelings. I try to remember to reload with fresh recharge batteries before a day of caching. I also try to keep them in pairs. If I remember, I'll number them. The one downside is that they seem to lose some capacity after a year or two. Again, nothing scientific about it. Just replace the old set with a new one every couple years or so. I also keep a few NICAD spare in my go bag for times when I forget to load fresh batteries in the morning. And when I don't take the charger, geo Woodstock trips, etc. By the way, just passed one more milestone, 4,000 finds. Congratulations. Well, congrats. That's an awesome milestone to uh, hit. Uh, now, I think those Duracell batteries he's talking about are actually the uh, low discharge ones that we were talking about. So they do last a little bit longer in the bag without the uh, discharge. Uh, and I'm, I'm thrilled to see that they're up to 2,500 because when I had those Duracell ones, the best I could get were 1950, which didn't last nearly as long. So yeah, hearing that they're up to that, that kind of makes me want to try them again. But I, I'm surprised uh, when radio that you're actually still doing NICADs. Those, I just typically avoid and for my spares i you know like i mentioned before i use those uh, lithiums in part because i still have lithiums and all these gpsrs behind me and i just never <laughs> have to replace them i always use everything till it's dead <laughs> yeah well the problem is that the uh, alkalines die really quick i i hate alkalines that's really what it comes down to is i just never want to use an alkaline battery again but tonight we are talking about travelers. The last time we talked about them was back on 2 uh, 11. Now, this time we're going to do something a little bit different and talk more about the collection and discovery of trackables because that seems to be where a lot of the questions have been coming in lately. Before we get into that, though, I want to uh, give you guys a little bit of a tip. So mark <laughs> your calendars for Tuesday, November 28th. An insider at Geocaching H2, Q. Yeah, yes, I can talk. Geocaching <laughs> HQ tipped me off that there's a new trackable promotion launching that day. We'll certainly mention it on the randomized show that Thursday, which is the very next show. And I'm hoping we might even have uh, one, maybe more of them to give away on the show. So I guess there's actually two days that you'll want to mark. You're going to want to mark the uh, 28th and the 30th. I always like the trackable promos. I do too. Especially when there's a contest involved. So that I'm kind of... But I don't get them as often now that there's now, now that random know. drawings. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't know much about what's happening, just that it's going to be announced that day. So it, I'm sure it's going to be another one of those signed up because that's what, like, everything but the uh, Captain Rodney's has done, and the Captain Rodney's was the exception. And who knows? They may allow Canada, too. Maybe. <laughs> 
maybe there's there it, if there's a contest canada probably won't be allowed to have one. canadians aren't allowed contests sure they are if the company suggests it well yeah it, it's <laughs> up to the company but you know it just seems like canadians aren't allowed contests you know because anytime there's a contest it's like you know except for canada all right uh ellen and radio actually uh emailed in too about uh trackables when i had initially posted the uh, uh uh, Google Hangout for this one. So why don't you read that email? Okay. Ellen on Railroad wrote in titled, Why I Hate Trackables. Back in February, I placed a trackable. It was taken and disappeared off the radar. It finally was placed today on a Terrain 4 Difficulty 3.5 cache on a trail. I guess I can forget about seeing that one moving again any for a while. Yeah, definitely. This is one of the problems with trackables. <laughs> At least that's not gone. But so, uh, so many of the uh, uh, replies I got on Twitter uh, today were all about the, I don't want to ever release another trackable. Actually, it was a couple of days ago. They posted a photo of the uh, proxy. It was actually at uh, your event. Yeah. Uh, out in the uh, uh, still brought it. Yeah. It, it was an interesting proxy, big, heavy coin kind of thing. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a proxy. I like the uh, note on it, though, which I should have uh, brought that up uh, and uh, I read that because that's quick. funny. Okay. Paul is going to look that up. But it, it, uh, it's this weird note about, you know, <laughs> the uh, uh, trackables going missing. And that seems to be the general consensus is no one wants to put out trackables anymore because they do go missing so quickly. But we've all seen, I think, this uh, uh, migration to the uh, uh, discoveries and more and more people putting discoverables on their car. We've got the tattoos and everything. So that's uh, one of the things we need to talk about. But Paula, I think you have that uh, yep. note. You may have noticed this is a replica. Replica. And not the real geocoin. It is an unfortunate fact that real geocoins do not last too long in the wild. This replica has no intrinsic value. Maybe it will last longer. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah, it, it it really seems to be hit and miss from my experience, whether it uh, sticks around or not. If uh, it's something that people are seeing a lot, you know, we were releasing a bunch of the uh, uh, Daryl W4 and Firefly 03 trackables in this area. And when we did that, almost none of them went missing. We were also making it easy for people to, you know, trade or buy if they didn't want to trade. So, you know, the availability for anyone who wanted to keep it was up there. In the first two years, we had a very low loss rate. And then, of course, the third year, when they all started going to uh, uh, Germany and uh, getting into some of those uh, uh, harder-to-get caches, uh, we had some go to Australia. Shoot, I'm trying to remember where some of the other places that they seemed to uh, vanish were. But we had a, a bunch of them, like the third year, they all started to disappear. Just like in mass. Uh, the Germany uh, thing, they all went over to Germany. And then I don't know if they actually continued to circulate or people just did discoveries because we were getting discover logs on them. And you know, Somebody took a picture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they just kind of end up in an abyss over in uh, Germany. Uh, by the way, uh, Wet Coaster says uh, that uh, Canadians are not allowed contests, and Ziggy <laughs> says that Aussies are also not allowed contests. Sure they are. They just need Canadian and Australian companies to sponsor them. Of course. All right, so let's get into the uh, collectible uh, bit on geocaching.com, and we've got uh, a link to the Help Center Article 3.2, Trackable Collections, that we're going to put into the show notes. Uh, so anyone who wants to read up on this can do it over there. But this is really not something that uh, makes a whole lot of sense. Anyone who it always owns, confuses me. Yeah, so that's what we're going <laughs> to try to figure out tonight. Because I've been going over this many, many times, and I, I think I've uh, got a good handle on it. And then something comes up and I get totally confused again. It is not really easy to figure out the yeah, collectibles thing. But the collectibles thing is first it's a flag to mark the trackable as being collectible. So what that is saying is as the owner, you have the option to make that a collectible. 
Once it's a collectible, any geocacher, including yourself, can move it into their collection. So you don't necessarily want to put a, a collectible coin or trackable out because that's signaling that the, the cacher who finds it doesn't necessarily have to move it on. They can put it into their collection and becomes discovery only. So first part is you have to uh, make it a collectible trackable. Then you can move the trackable to the collection as yourself or as a you know different geocacher if it's as long as it's a collectible once it's in your inventory once you've logged that you've picked it up you can mark it as being in your collection are you following so far i still get confused yeah it, it's it because is not I, here's my normal. problem i marked my car with its nice fishy travel bug as not collectible People can discover it, but they can't take it. Works perfectly. I've tried to do the same thing with my a fish out of water t-shirt. I've had my shirt stolen from me so many times while camp caching, and then everyone's laughing at me. Ha ha, Paul is caching without a shirt on. Okay, that, <laughs> that sounds like uh, something isn't quite right, because if you've marked it as a trackable and moved it into the collection, which is what it sounds like you've done with a the car, then you can discover it, and that's the only way to make well, it as discovery Well, they're both in my inventory, only. so I can get mileage. Really? Mm hmm but, Hmm. Okay. I mark there's when a, I wear my name tag this. and when I drive my car somewhere. Ooh. I'm but yes, it's, be, it's become a game with my friends who can steal Paula's shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we have that kind of thing all the time, too, <laughs> where it's like, I stole your car. Of course you did. Um, hmm. Okay, we'll have to look into that a little later, or hopefully if uh, uh, people in the chat actually know anything about that, they'll be able to uh, uh, pipe up and let us know how that's working. That She's got it in her inventory, but it's still only a discovery. As, it, as far as I understand, that's not really possible. And very confusing. I guess I should have done my homework. <laughs> yeah, that's the situation <laughs> that... Uh, uh, I hadn't been able to figure out. And the only way that I know of and that I've seen that actually works to make it discovery only is you put it as a, a collectible and then whoever has it in the inventory has to move it into their collection and then it becomes discovery only. If it's in your inventory, then you can do the uh, visits and stuff like that, you know, drop it into a cache. But if it's in the collection, you can't do that. So once it's in the collection, you don't get to dip or anything else which is why a lot of people don't like the collections. You know, if you've got that coin that you want to move around and uh, track mileage, mm -hmm. even though it might not be with you, but, you know, track the mileage for the dog, track the mileage for the car, you know, that's what you usually uh, use those uh, uh, coins for and then let someone else discover them and you do the visit. So if it goes into your collection, it stops showing up in the inventory and you don't get the chance to uh, uh, dip those. Right. So that's the problem with the uh, collection. The nice thing about the collection, though, is once it's in your inventory, you know, you, no one can steal it from you. You can't uh, accidentally drop the wrong trackable going. And, and let's face it, a lot of the people who have a bunch of uh, discoveries are going to have a whole bunch of discoveries. You're going to have like 20, 30, maybe coins or shirts or uh, you know, the tags, tattoos, you know, all of these different tracking numbers because you know, it gets addictive. So once you get to that level, you don't really want them showing in your inventory, which is, I think, a good part of why they created it that way. So that when you move it to the collection, it's not in your inventory, so you don't have to deal with it. You don't have to accidentally drop it into a cache. Ba -dum -bum -bum. All right, so what you have to do is... On the actual trackable, as the owner, you go to edit it. If you know, It's a checkbox too, or I think it's actually a radio button when you first set it up. Uh, on the uh, initial page, it changes its um, selection states between whether it's a new activation or an edit, which I always find annoying. But it's an option there. Make this a trackable. If you mark it yes, then someone can move it to their collection. 
If it's marked no, then it moves like a normal trackable would. Then on the trackable, once it's been marked as uh, a collectible, you go to the uh, um, pop-up where it has the uh, options to like, you know, the, the um, oh, why can I not remember it? It's uh, like recalculate was one of the options, move to last location. You have that little action pop-up. You go to there and hit the uh, uh, move to collection. It, the little pop-up is actually called action, but of course I can't remember what any of the other options are in there. And it does change depending on whether you're the owner, the cash owner for which it's placed in, or the um, uh, just person viewing it. So that actions menu, I think only has recalculate uh, mileage if it's, or distance, if it's uh, uh, not an owner of some type, if you're the uh, cash owner, uh, in which the cash is or the trackable is placed, then you have the option to mark as missing. And as the uh, trackable owner, you will also have the options for move mm -hmm. to last location and mark as missing. So that's where that's going to show up is in that actions pop up. And I think it didn't uh, really say that you had to do it. It makes that hint here. But as far as I know, it has to be in your inventory for the move to collection to work which makes sense because you wouldn't want someone to just log that uh, right. they're moving your uh, car into their collection if you've marked it as collectible and not done it otherwise. And then to move it out of your collection, if you actually want to get it uh, set free again, you go to the uh, uh, trackable page and you hit move to inventory and that's pretty much it. Same thing, you know, just the reverse of what you've done before. All right, so that confused a lot of people, I'm sure, but hopefully... I think it's just poorly worded. <laughs> yeah, it was poorly worded, and it's really hard to figure out the context of this stuff and how it actually works. You know, once you've done it like 10 or 12 times, you're still confused by it. it you know, it, it really is a great idea, but for some reason, it just doesn't seem to mesh right. I think it's the words collectible and non-collectible. It'd be mine. And well, in the in the movable. inventory, and well, <laughs> and because it's called collectible, a lot of people don't realize that that just makes it discoverable. They think right. it's I'm putting it into a box, and I just want it moved out of inventory. You know, if they stop and think about it, that's typically what I get is you know this is what's supposed to happen. So, the fact that it also limits the actions is very cool. Yes, but isn't necessarily what uh, everyone wants. Now, the, we'll get into what uh, people actually want to talk about, though, which is the discovery of the trackables. And I put out a call to try to get some other ideas for tools, but we really didn't come up with many. So if there's anyone in the live chat who has anything other than Project GC, log them all, TV scan, and Geo Live that they want to uh, include, go ahead and punch that in now. But the one that most of us are probably familiar with is that Project GC, which is a web-based tool. And it's a... Uh, um, oh, taking... you forgot one. What's the one that we forget? Geocaching.com. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You can, of course, <laughs> do it there, but that's not for, like, bulk discovery. And we, we probably should have mentioned that. <laughs> we're, we're talking about the tools for bulk discoveries. <laughs> Yeah, you, you can, of course, do it on geocaching.com. Most of the caching apps do individual uh, 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 discoveries. You know, it's just another log type. So if you want to discover a trackable, <laughs> all you need is that uh, tracking code. It's not the TV number that you can share freely and no one uh, can discover it. What you're looking for is that uh, code, the tracking code that's actually printed on the coin or on the shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever it is, that's the one that if they have that code, they can uh, discover it. Or if it's not a uh, uh, collected item, they can take it from you. And then run amok with it. Yes. Steal that person's leg with a tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh. The biggest problem with uh, bulk discoveries is that the partner API is locked, so you won't get any new apps. That's uh, from Team Mavidu. True. 
So, okay. Well, the other problem with bulk discovery is when I forget that I already logged that entire list I wrote down. And then I relog it a few months later and people start texting me or emailing me and saying, oh, you found my missing trackable. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I've run into that a few times. Uh, White Coaster says the last two large events he's been to have the option or have, have, uh, the, have had the option to have a list of trackables dropped into the event emailed to you after the event. I've seen a few of those. Uh, I'm not sure how I really feel about that, but I mean, it, it's really cool to have that, but at the same time, it's like, I'm not sure that a trackable that moves around, I want all those discoveries on it. You know, it's kind of, you know, here and there. But I, I do like the fact that they allow you to do that. It's just a matter of, you know, if I don't get my hands on it, I don't really want to discover it. Any case, but you know, you'll have all of these uh, uh, notes on a piece of paper otherwise and go, ooh, I can't read this one. What was that one? So it's always nice to have them vetted, which is why I like some of these tools. But Project GC is the web-based tool that most of us know. That just takes a text list just, you know, the number return, number return, you punch that in, uh, you know, copy, paste, whatever. So you take like that email with all of those codes, copy it, paste it into Project GC, do your log, whatever that uh, wants to be, you know, standard logging procedure, hit mm -hmm. the button and it goes and queues it up and does it. So very handy, really nice to have because it works on anything because it's web-based. Well, anything that has a web browser. And you just go from the tools menu to other discover trackables. You copy, paste, and you're done. I used to handwrite every trackable I picked up at an event and touched. And I turn to now just typing them into my notes section on my phone. And that way I can copy it and dump it into that text field on Project GC. Yeah. And log them all is a very similar thing, but it's easier because there's fewer options. All you do is you go to log them all, uh, drop in the uh, log text, the uh, list of trackables, and it's the same thing. But that one, you know, it's like you go there and you, you're done. Uh, now, Ziggy is saying writing, he takes uh, photos of the uh, trackables. I did that too, but I'm saving a step now by just typing them in real quick. See, and what I like to do is use TV Scan, which is an iOS-only app. And that does OCR from the camera or the camera roll. So if you've already taken all those photos, it will let you scan from there. But you can also do manual entries. So if you're... Uh, TB scan drives me nuts. Now, you, <laughs> this is one thing I have to say, too, is if you are wanting to use TB scan, unfortunately, it's pretty much useless without the premium membership. Correct. If you don't have the premium uh, upgrade or whatever on the app, I can't remember. Is it called premium? I don't I know, but if you if you have the freebie, you can only do 10. I, I thought it was five. I think it was 10. May have been five. And you can't and, export it. And you, um, I get frustrated because it doesn't want to capture that image. Yeah. You know, when so, it, it's on the side of a coin or it's yes, dinky. Yes, there's a or, lot of situations where TV scan will not work. A lot of the curved stuff won't work if it's on the Hand edge of a stamped. coin. If it's really, really tiny, that doesn't work. So that's one of the nice things with the uh, enter manually. And it, what they've done with this, or what he has done with this, is uh, pretty cool. If you have a trackable that is not being recognized, but you can still see it on the screen, you just hit the uh, manual entry button, and it freezes that uh, picture so that you can type what mm. you're seeing on screen. So that's really nice, but even more so if you're out of uh, coverage area. And this, of course, they did it right after. Or he did it the upgrade right after I uh, uh, did all of the parking lot uh, trackables at Going Caching uh, <laughs> and was having problems with connections. He yes, did but it. were you working undercover for the RCMP? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> White Coaster, I like that story. <laughs> White Coaster says he's walked around the parking lot <laughs> taking photos. When people ask, he says he's working undercover at the RCMP. No. Now, this, this is at geocaching events. They all know what you're doing. And I've even had people ask me if I can send them the list. 
Oh yeah, we share the list. Oh yeah, and, but uh, <laughs> this is one of the things that's so nice about uh, TV Scan. If you have the connections, it's going and validating each of those tracking codes, so you know that that's a good tracking number when you do it. Then, before you actually submit, you do have the option to export the list to email, or you know, um, uh, share sheets. So I can send that list to someone as a share sheet, which gets a little bit weird. But you know, you can take it and send it email. You can send it uh, uh, messenger if that's what you prefer to do. <laughs> hangouts, uh, messages, you know, all kinds of things. So it's just you know, get it out there any way that you uh, want to. And a lot of people I know will email it just so that they have a copy of that list if they ever have to go back to it. You know, if uh, something fails, if you lose your uh, uh, connection during the uh, hmm. discoverers, whatever. Well, that's why I like Project GC because it'll almost immediate feedback which ones were wrong. So then I know which I can. It depends. After the mega events, when I've tried oh, it, yeah, yeah. Just... it takes me like an hour sometimes. Even though I'm a premium member, it takes an hour because <laughs> they have such a uh, backlog. Oh, plus I think the last time I did that, they were uh, rebuilding some of their database because of a, uh, a hardware failure. Uh, but yeah, it, and this uh, email from uh, TV Scan is just that text file with those uh, tracking numbers. So when you send it to someone, mm -hmm. they just go to like log me all, log them all, or uh, Project GC and do the same thing. They paste it in and just do it. So you know, it, it's just a generic. Anyone can use it. They don't have to have iOS. What now? What I really find annoying, I can't take that file and put it back into TV Scan if I wanted to do the discovery. I have to go to hmm. a third party, you know, a third app to do it. That's kind of really annoying. It just drove me nuts because of trying to get that photo. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it is really picky that you have to have a good uh, image with uh, enough contrast. It does work remarkably well, but there's other times where you won't get it to work at all. One of the big things is make sure that your lens is clean. Oh. If your lens is not clean, <laughs> it's not going to get you a big... Uh, uh, a big difference. It's not going to have that nice defined edge because it's all getting a little blurry. I'm supposed to clean that after caching? <sighs> I try to clean it uh, every time I'm going to take a picture, but I don't. <laughs> and, and no cracks in the lens. <laughs> I, I have seen so many of those recently <laughs> where there's a crack in the lens and people are wondering why they're not getting uh, good pictures. It's like, have, have you looked at your lens? No. <laughs> Did you clean your lens? No. Okay. Clean your lens. Oh, there's a crack in my lens. Yes, that's why you can't take pictures. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and then the other one that I have is the uh, Geo Live, which is an Android app. And I, that one I have had very little experience with. Uh, we worked with uh, one of the other cashers at the event on Wednesday, or Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. And uh, got a little bit of a feel for it. It does... Uh, uh, seemed to detect easier. One of the problems he had, though, is he was getting multiple detections. Oh, and uh, Ron is in the uh, uh, Hangout right now, or in the uh, chat. But he was getting multiple detections and then had to go back through the list and figure out which was the right one. Hmm. And it was incredible at some of the uh, readings that it got. Like, uh, you know, he'd get out of the six letters probably 30 different variants where at least every letter or number had changed at least once. So again, I think that's highly dependent on your phone and on the uh, uh, camera. But any of these OCRs are going to have issues. OCR? Optical character recognition. Thank you. So where you can take the picture and do it. Please tell me I wasn't the only one that didn't know that. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure. Uh, but Ron says that uh, Geo can also import the bulk TB list uh, plus the scan or the manual entry. Now, what, Ron, uh, hopefully you can uh, chime in uh, before we move on. One of the things that we couldn't figure out is, is there a way to get back to that bulk list if you accidentally exit out all the way to the uh, uh, menu, to the Geo Live menu? So that was uh, And everyone, an don't issue. forget. Oh, yes. And everyone uh, who's been watching the show for about <laughs> the last four or five weeks knows that over here in the uh, corner, right above uh, Paula's head right now, or right next to her head, 
I've been putting a discovery code. This one's for like a little gift gnome. I've got three of these guys, so there's going to be two more of them. Uh, I believe this one's the dancer. Oh, it's not your um, 3D printed gnome? No, no. He, he just sits there all the time <laughs> guarding the trackables. Because I have to have guardians for the trackables or they will walk away. Yeah, Renee likes the shiny objects too. <laughs> Paula knows this problem apparently. <laughs> anyway. Well, that so, and she's your new wife, so you, she has a very shiny object. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, but I do have a, a list that I've been, a spreadsheet, a Google spreadsheet that I've been keeping going. And uh, I, I'm going to put the link in the show notes because one of the cool things that I found with Google Sheets is when I put the whole list in there, you could highlight just that column, copy it and paste it right into like Project GC. However, when you publish it as a web page, that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so it, it, one of the tricks that you can do <clears throat> and try it yourself if you like, is highlight the whole uh, body of the spreadsheet and paste it into a new spreadsheet somewhere else because it, it does come through as tabs and when you paste it into a spreadsheet, the columns uh, come up. So if you highlight those uh, on that spreadsheet, copy and paste, that will still work. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I've done is there's a link to discover, well, it takes you to the trackable page on geocaching.com. So you can just click and discover on uh, geocaching.com right from the uh, spreadsheet. Uh, going back to uh, GeoLive, Ron says, yes, long press the scanner button to show the TB stored in the list, but not logged. So good tip for anyone uh, using uh, Geo Live. Here's something that um, I learned or didn't know <laughs> or just didn't think about. Y2K compliant doesn't like to use Project GC and some of the other mass logging because it doesn't give him the feedback that, hey, buddy, you already discovered this some other time. And he said that it was something new on GC.com that it will it will prompt you to say, do you realize you've discovered this before? Or when you if you put type it in, it'll show you you had already discovered it. And I guess it didn't always do that? No, it did not do that uh, previously. And it was only, and this might be what you're thinking of, because I don't know that I've ever seen it. It's like a found it log. log. It's a discovered it log. Right, right, right. I don't know that I've seen that one. And it might be, but because I don't do a whole lot of the... Uh, and logging on the website, on the geocaching website. But there is a new feature that on the trackable page, it will show just like it does with any cache, when you registered your uh, find um, you know, on the page, it uh, shows your log for, I think it shows both discovery and a move log at the same time. So that that is a nice feature to go to geocaching.com for. So what's Edwin's caching name? That's Team Navajou. Oh, so Team Navajou, we're just making it sound boring. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the, one of the things that I never expected was to get into the tracking of the uh, uh, trading cards at uh, uh, Going Caching. You know, the, you try to put together this whole deck of, you know, 250 some cards while you're at the event, and each one has a code. It's not unique to the track, to the, uh, uh, individual card you have, but it's kind of like a path tag. It's unique to that card, you know, that series of cards. So every card for Geo Gearheads has the same code. So you discover that code. You can't, you could actually, you know, the way that that worked was uh, going caching creates the cards, they set up the trackable page and then adopt to the card uh, purchaser, the you know, the owner of that uh, series of cards, the uh, uh, trackable, and then it's up to them to move it to their collection or whatever. So they could do technically whatever they want with it, but it is uh, you know discovery only because you've got two, three hundred copies of this card moving around. That causes some problems and confuses a lot of people. Even though it says discover at geocaching.com, it's been causing some problems. So we've heard some grumblings that uh, geocaching.com might do something about that. But at this point, there's nothing official, nothing's happening. It's just 
there has been enough complaints about it recently that they're looking at it so we may see some changes in the discoveries i know people get too. confused it's like am i supposed to keep this or do i move it or well i think with the trading cards it was nice and easy because the trading cards you know that there's hundreds of these things out there you know, it's not small print it's big print even though you know this is one of those uh, mm -hmm. situations a tv scan would really have helped it didn't work at all <laughs> There was just not enough contrast that it can't do anything with that uh, uh, code. So I had to hand enter the 200 or whatever it was cards that I actually collected. Poor baby. But what, what I found <laughs> interesting about doing that whole process is we're actually trading there with people. So we'd keep separate piles. These are the ones we hand traded with the owner. Here's the ones that we traded for something else. So we're putting in these notes as we're going along of which ones we traded. And we're keeping track of, okay, we've already discovered <clears throat> this one. So we can't log this one again. You know, because we'd, we'd sometimes we'd get the card in the pack, but trade with the owner. So we don't want to rediscover that log, you know, so that card. So we ended up with multiple lists of here's the ones we got at this event. Here's the ones we got at this event. You know, th these are the ones that we traded with the owner. This is the ones we just traded. Just make a baggie, put a word on it. and. <laughs> well, no, this, this is just the discoveries. Well, I know, but you could you would put them in the baggies, log them later based on what hmm. the baggie said. Yeah, that's basically what we were doing. <laughs> but we were doing that at the hotel in part so that we didn't have to remember that <laughs> far out, uh, you know, and logging what we had so we could easily go back and look it up uh, uh, if we forgot the sheet that we had been logging it on because we weren't smart enough to put it on like a Google spreadsheet or something that we could actually do. Uh, okay, anyway. So we have Ziggy said, I haven't trolled the Project GC enough uh, to have found that bulk TV logging before, but I just tried it out and it works really well. I've got a backlog. First batch was from January. <laughs> You're going to love it. <laughs> it. It makes life so much easier. It really does. It, it is a nice feature. And when you go to some of these events, you'll have uh, people who will actually be able to give you Either they'll email you a text file or some of them actually will have websites with a, a URL that they can send you and you can just copy and paste. So that will, that will make your life so much easier. And it really is fun to do. And I have geo buddies like scrap cat and we take turns because we're both writing down this or taking pictures or whatever means at the same event. And so it's like, Sometimes she does it, sometimes I do it. Sure. Well, and usually when I go to events, I'm the one who uh, does the TV scan because I just am the one who does it. But uh, then I send it to anyone else who wants it is the email. You know, like Renee has problems getting hers to work usually because she has uh, either lighting problems or she hasn't cleaned her lens in you know, a couple of days and it got all smooched up in her purse or whatever. Um, Note, though, real quick on the spreadsheet that I had done that we're going to have the link to. We talked about this one uh, a few times before, but if you want to do the links like I'm doing where it goes right to the page, it's just a, a link on geocaching.com. So you go to the usual geocaching.com slash trackable slash details dot ASPX question mark tracker equals. And don't try to remember that. Just, you know, Click the link and copy it out and replace the uh, tracking number with your own tracking number. So it's just a really quick and easy way to do it. And I've actually had times before that uh, I'll go and do that instead of go to the geocaching page and click all the links. Because if I have one of those in the uh, bookmark bar, you just go and do it and mm -hmm. save so much time over trying to go and do it the long, the long hand way. Because, you know, I'm lazy that way. Well, they're uh, talking about something totally different on the uh, chat. Yeah. Ron uh, from uh, uh, GeoLive uh, says that GeoLive has a new feature that lets you define a list of your TVs that will <clears> automatically <throat> log a visit when uh, uh, logging a cache. Also uh, lets you set a predefined TV log plus automatically attach any cache log photos to the TV log. And this is one we actually talked about on the show. It was uh, one of our listeners from either New Zealand or Australia, I think, was asking about how to do that. 
because they had, I think it was a coin for the dogs that, or maybe two coins, one for two different dogs, but they're using coins to track where they're taking their dogs and they wanted to automatically log it. So that goes back to that first thing. But again, if you have the uh, tra uh, collection turned on and it's in your collection, that shouldn't work. It should not let you do that because you're, it's in your collection. You can't do the uh, Maybe it's business in logs their anymore. inventory. Right. No, no. It, it, yeah, you have to be in the inventory to do it. All right. So I'm going to take a look while we're sitting here. Oh, well, you're looking. Go ahead. I'm going to say things I've learned to try and not make them go missing. You don't want things that are super, super cute because Snoopy will go missing. But on the other hand, if we found drill a hole in something, make it unusable. It's cute, but who wants a hole in it? And then also, when you put your little um, keychain thingies, squish them down and we'll, and then do a little soldering. Oh, that that's actually a good tip too. If anyone's uh, doing any of those um, uh, ball chains, those things suck. <laughs> they really do. I use them all the time, but they suck. Uh, so yeah, make sure at the very least to grab a plier and uh, squish it down because as soon as that tag comes off the item, it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's not going to, you know, you're not going to get those... Uh, uh, back together again. So make sure you do everything you can. And I usually squished it down really tight. A uh, few people have used the hot glue trick. That tends to work well too, but the solder is probably your best bet. I learned that one from the G's. Uh, the other thing that I've done on some is get the uh, cable ties instead and not the uh, wire ties. So I've seen people do that, but the uh, uh, cable ties, they're the uh, cables that screw down and some of these you can actually crimp. Oh, those are like the, you know, like um, the aircraft things wire. You put the path tags on. Though. Yeah, a lot of people use them for the uh, path tags. If you use those, they tend to last a lot better too. Uh, but if you get the ones that are crimped down, then you, know, you can't do it at all. <laughs> Edwin is saying his daughter had an Eve for months in her bedroom. What's that? I'm assuming that's a travel bug, but... I because I, I can't imagine. Well, I thought the, it was one of those little robots. Well, it probably is the robot from uh, uh, Wally, -E. but as a travel bug is my guess, but I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. And uh, Wet Coaster saying he went to Home Depot to get the metal cable with the compression <laughs> fitting, and yes, it is uh, aircraft wire that he's using. Ah, okay. Um, they're saying that the EV is the uh, Pokemon. I think there's uh, four E's in EV. I'd have to go and double check. I'm not a Pokemon person, but there's a. Um, they're very cute uh, stuffed plushies. Yeah, but there's a um, floppy fish hatchery in my backyard. <laughs> Magic carp. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder how they figure that out. Everybody that comes to pick me up to go geocaching that's also a pokey person, I don't find them in my driveway, I find them over there. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> this is a little suspicious. How did they know that uh, fish out of water belongs at a fish out of water's residence? Uh, I think you might uh, need to figure out who's uh, stalking you over at uh, Niantic. All right. Uh, dumbest Pokemon is the Magikarp. <gasps> it's coming from White Coaster. <laughs> All right. Well, I have a little four-year-old caching buddy, Cash Hunter, and he always calls it a fish out of water. Floppy fish. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard him call him the, fl uh, the floppy fish. He gets very excited at any of the events he's had about the floppy fish. <laughs> I think he's actually called you Floppy Fish a couple yeah. of times. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Hopefully, we've helped you, not uh, confused you too much more. And thanks so much for uh, coming in studio and uh, helping out today. I forgot today. to show the big one. Oh, the big one. <laughs> These don't go missing, but they're hard to find a they, place to put. They don't go missing, and they almost <laughs> never find their way into a cache. They're event only. No, no, they find their way into my tent. I at, didn't, at I didn't agree to take this one. <laughs> no one would. That's how you got stuck with it. No, I usually do. 
too. The problem was I already had a muffler See, and, a, and a rolling pin. At least that one's nice and soft and squishy and doesn't weigh a lot. It, it's like the uh, uh, geocoin made out of a manhole cover that you don't want to get. The ones that barely fit in your car, and if they do, might break it. All right. So thanks again for joining us <laughs> and helping out in the absence of Chris, who's running around collecting up all thanks of his tracks. Thanks for trackables. inviting me. <laughs> I, I don't think I blame Chris for running around and grabbing all his trackables. If nothing else, he gets a bunch of fines, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. And thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure having you here and getting some of your expertise about Discovery, because most of the cashers I know aren't as into uh, moving trackables anymore as you are. I can't tell you the last time I was in an event that someone didn't come up to me and say, here, I don't know what to do with it. Take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which I think I've done too a few times too. All right. Now, we do have some more good shows coming up. And next week, we're going to be talking about uh, geocaching Australia. Then the following week on the 30th is that randomized show we mentioned. So that's always a good chance to get your uh, questions in and figure out, uh, you know, answers to questions that uh, you might have. So Wait, is Geocaching Australia, you're going to do it on um, Thanksgiving night or people from Australia are taking over? No, we're going to do it. It's going to be a regular interview. Okay. So I can't remember uh, the other one's name, but uh, Team Avidu is going to be one of the uh, guests on that one to talk about Geocaching Australia. Okay. Uh, and then, ba anyways, back to uh, randomize. If you do have anything, and it really it works for any of the shows, if you have anything you want to send us, uh, feedback, questions, anything like that, it's geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com. And we'll be sure to uh, read that and get that on the show if it makes sense. And if you tell us we can, or if you, if you don't tell us that we can't, I I've had a few of those lately. Don't put this on the show. Anyways. <laughs> Oh, it is Ziggy. Okay. Ah, Ziggy. Good. Yes, that makes sense. Oh, anyway, <laughs> Ziggy will be on the show with uh, Team FG uh, next week. <laughs> anyway, December 7th, our first show for December is going to be Munzee and more. We're going to have Rob on to talk about uh, some of the new stuff in Munzee, including uh, Freestack, because, you know, they're now the same company. Then on the 14th, it's going to be uh, uh, Tech Changes Caching. We've done one of these a long time ago, but we've got... Uh, um, Sherman year 18 coming on to talk with Chris and I about uh, what has happened with technology. So kind of a little bit of the nostalgia thing and kind of maybe some predictions about where it's going to go in the future. I want to see how that new chip that's going to be like super, super accurate, how that's going to change it. Yeah. Because uh, I know like with my 10 year old nephews, we'll get close to a cache and they'll go, well, it's not here. And I'm like, put the thing down and look. The level five <laughs> signals. And what I do find, we'll get, well, we're going to take a little bit of a detour. We like to do this. What I do find interesting about that is, uh, I think actually someone mentioned this not long ago on one of the other shows, but the coordinate system isn't terribly accurate if you truncate it to three decimal places on the uh, 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 minutes, which is what geocaching does. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get any more accurate than like, you know, six to 10 feet probably. So more accurate chips aren't really going to help find the cache that much easier unless you have one of those situations with like the tree cover or the uh, urban jungles that uh, you normally have the refractions or the weak signals that the level five signals help with. So it's going to be interesting, but don't expect it to like, okay, I'm standing on it. Where is it? That's <laughs> never going to happen. Unless we get... Uh, Especially if I hide it. <laughs> unless we start <laughs> extending past the third decimal place. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So, check the Cashamaniacs website at cashamaniacs.com for more of the Geo Gearheads, including show notes for this and all of our episodes. We love hearing from our listeners, so leave us feedback by emailing geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com or through social media. Your support helps keep the Cashamaniacs shows coming. Please consider becoming a patron through the link on our website to support the Cash Maniac shows. Geo Gearheads is produced by Chris Offenauer and Daryl Wanberg. This show is copyright 2017 by Daryl Wanberg. All rights reserved.